start. Okay, thank you so much. My name is Dana Abercrombie. I'm from the coalition. It is a pleasure to meet you. My my childhood is like, yay! Um, I love the docu-series. And one of the things I wanted to know, you're the executive producer, is how do you go about finding which gymnasts will have the most compelling story? You know, I will have to say at the beginning when I sat down with the directors, JP and Harrison, um, you know, we went through a list of young girls that actually had a chance of making it to the Olympics. I love the five that, number one, agreed to be a part of it. Trust me, they're young girls that are like, no, we don't want the distraction. Um, but the five that agreed to be a part of it, that we love diversity, not only with ethnicity, but also with regards to their story. You have Michaela Skinner, who's married. I love that. What married gymnast is there out there that makes it to the Olympic team? She's 24 years old. She's got this story of being a phenomenal Utah gymnast, in addition to just shyly making the former Olympic team in 2016. Then you have Lori Hernandez. Who doesn't love her? Who doesn't love Lori Hernandez? And she is so candid during this piece with regards to talking about how her personality is a little different than what she's kind of been showing the public of being this human emoji. And she's like, it's draining to be that 24 seven. And I love that she's starting to get a little bit more comfortable in the skin that she's in. I went through those struggles um, as a, a gymnast first. And then also we had Suni Lee, phenomenal story there and coming back from an injury and she looks great uh, in making this Olympic team. Uh, Morgan Hurd, you know, had a number of injuries and had a very hard time coming back physically to train for this Olympic Games. And then last but not least, Connor, Connor McLean, who we love this story because she was not age eligible to make it for 2020 Tokyo. And so when the, these Olympic Games were postponed, she then became age appropriate where she could actually qualified to these Olympic Games. And so her year uh, was kind of jump-started with the potential of making an Olympic team. And so these five athletes, just the stories are so unique and them just being so candid and honest has been, has been a joy. Right. And so I was wondering, how do you go about the filming process? Were these kids, adults, teenagers are basically going through stresses of competition without adding on to that extra stress of the camera always being there. I know it was mentioned one of the girls said, you know, I don't mind, it's fine, but they're dealing with, you know, they're, they're, ha they're able to deal with high tolerance. So how yeah. do you know and able to read that situation? Well, I wish I was there, but because of COVID, um, I did not travel and I'm also not a camera woman. So I would not have been useful whatsoever, I would say in that process. But um, JP and Harrison, I remember when we spoke early on, they talked about how they were going to be a fly on the wall. And I was telling them, good luck with that. Because I remember when camera crews would come in, they, to me, were such a distraction and they would add this enormous amount of pressure in addition to the already the pressure I was putting on myself or just from the culture of the sport. And so you know, kudos to those young girls. They were able to really stay focused. You saw them laugh. You saw them joke. You saw them, you know, even in the interview process, being pretty honest. Michaela Skinner, who's a little bit more older and mature, was like, whatever, I can, you know, I can speak my mind now. So this is great. And we love that. And I think also that's a testament to um, our directors. They are just phenomenal people. They came at this with the right perspective of really wanting to give these young girls the platform that they deserve. This is not about us directing and telling them what to do and how to do things and how to be politically correct. No, we wanna show your fans, their fans, the journey that it takes. And throughout my 18 year career journey, I went to three Olympic games and I went through this process three different times. And throughout my career, my fans only saw us at the Olympic games or at Olympic trials or at USA championships. They didn't see the behind the scenes on a going basis. And this was very refreshing, but eye opening to see. And I think the fans will embrace this. Right. And with that being said, what misconceptions that you hope this docu-series kind of quells? Oh, if anything, I think it's going to show the honesty about the sport of gymnastics and how it does need to change and that um, it does have an enormous amount of pressure and anxiety that's put upon these young people. Um, just think Connor McLean when you watch this piece. No matter where she was going, even in church, she was called out and that she was an Olympic hopeful and she kicked her heels off and did a cartwheel back handspring, back handspring. I remember that. That was my childhood. 
being at um, a church function or just being out in life and everyone knew you as the Olympic hopeful or in my case, the Olympian, and that you had to turn it on and feel as if you had to perform. And I remember when she turned to her mom and she said, what, what do I have to do? What do I do? And the mom was like, just do whatever, you know? And it's almost like you feel as if you have to constantly be on and that you're performing for others. That's what people are going to see that the sport of gymnastics is all about being under a microscope on a stage and you're constantly being judged and you're constantly being looked at. And that's something about the sport that I think a lot of people don't think about. They think about it when you're at the Olympics and you're on, you know, the spotlights are on you. But for many of these young girls, the spotlight is never dim, that it's always on them. They're always striving to be perfection. They're always striving for perfection and it's a little too much. Right. Now, you see yourself in these girls. When it comes to women or girls who are watching this right now and they say, I want to aspire to be a gymnast, what advice could you give them? Um, you know, the advice that I would give young people if they are aspiring to be a gymnast, I would say, you know, make sure it's coming from you and develop a passion and a love for the sport of gymnastics, but recognize um, that you can do so much more. I'm not saying don't be a gymnast, but it's the friendships that you're developing along the way. It's developing your character um, through the struggles in the sport and the pain in the sport, and that it's going to help propel you to do bigger and better, greater things in life. But what more importantly, I hope um, the group of individuals that take away from anything from this are the parents and the parents that either A, have a little, little child and they want their child to be a gymnast, or they have a child that is currently a gymnast. And I want parents to open their eyes to the culture of the sport and how in this docu-series, while you will see kids, these young girls, because some of them are kids, you will see them laugh, you will see them joke, you will see them hang out. However, you need to open your eyes to the anxiety, to the pressure, to the striving for perfectionism, and that that is very unhealthy. And that our children need to have a, a healthy, well-balanced childhood. Just think what the small, the, the small percentage of young kids that step into a gymnastics gym um, actually make an Olympic team. I think it's probably under a half a percent, if that, to make it to the Olympic team. Is it really worth it? And I will speak from personal experience. Standing on top of, a, of an Olympic podium did not fulfill me, did not equate to happiness. And so I want parents to recognize that. Not that I don't want them to get into the sport of gymnastics. I, of course, want them to. I own a gymnastics gym now. It's the Dominic Dawes Gymnastics Academy. However, it can be done in a healthier way, in a healthier way that's going to develop your kids to have a healthy sense of self. Right. And in the docuseries, it touched upon the reckoning that USA Gymnastics has faced over the years. Uh, it talks about the positivity and the change just that have been, but everything is still not perfect yet. From someone who's kind of been on the inside, what do you think needs to be done further? Well, tell me a little bit more about, about the positive changes that have been made. Well, they, they got rid of the coach that they was talking about. They There's now going to be the parents are more involved. It's not so much of a closed door situation. So, I know the doctors are now, they're supervised. So I was just wondering what more else could be done. There are still many more people that are out on that floor that I either or currently or have abused young girls and they need to be off the floor. We need to, it's not just, number one, the job that USA Gymnastics has is a very hard job and they should not have to take 100% responsibility. There are individual coaches and individual gym owners that have control over the athletes that are in their facility. A lot of those individuals are not healthy to be working with children. It is not just about Larry Nassar. It is not just about sexual abuse. It is also about the, the years and years of verbal abuse, physical abuse, psychological abuse on these young girls. I know from experience that I don't want my children, I have four children, I don't want my children to go through what I went through. And everyone talks about the culture. The culture is full of intimidation, fear, and silence. As a young person, I was taught that how I felt, um, you know, like I wasn't allowed to speak up. Like I was, I taught myself really at a young age to not trust my feelings because when I spoke up once, I got reprimanded pretty badly for it. And so that needs to change. We need the healthier culture. We need young kids to recognize um, that their feelings do matter. We need parents to open their eyes. There are too, still too many parents out there that watch their child hyperventilate before practice cry throughout practice, leave practice crying, and they still bring them back the next day. You need to step in and you need to intervene as a parent. You need to protect your children. You need to nurture your children. I don't care if your children are saying, your child is saying, I want to go to the gym. It's not 
clearly healthy emotionally if you're seeing this in young kids. I've seen it for years and years and years. I don't see it at my gym because my gym is all about empowering and encouraging children and recognizing that our words matter and our actions matter. But it is a, it is a tough job that USA Gymnastics has. I do appreciate that a part of this docu-series that they did open the doors, that they allowed us there for the selection committee. They allowed us there and kept these young girls and the coaches mic'd. And many of these girls were honest. I remember one of the athletes, and you'll see it in the docu-series, was really pretty much saying, I can't wait till this is over because I want to go to college. And that's where they have fun. That's where they let loose and they have fun and they regain a, their love of the sport back. And my best friend who went off and got a full scholarship, she has said to me year and time and time again for years now, she says, Dom, I don't know what I would have done with myself if I didn't have college gymnastics. College gymnastics help renew her love for the sport of gymnastics. Elite gymnastics does not do that. Right. And one of the things I was wondering while watching this series, and I know that you, you're, again, part of the Olympics, the dream team. Uh, what, if any, were there any kind of new insights or perspectives that you learned throughout all the years that has changed from since you was comp uh, competing? That's a very good question. I mean, other than the fact that Simone is out of this world, unreal, <laughs> um, you know, like I'm like, I didn't envision a gymnast, not even a male either, do some of the moves that she's doing as flawless as she's doing them. Um, you know, I think what I like about the change that I'm seeing in the sport, it doesn't have to do with the talent or this new scoring system or things of that nature. I love that these athletes are, and I don't even want to say outspoken, but I love that these athletes are feeling comfortable with speaking their mind. And one that has been an amazing leader, and I admire her for this more than her athletic prowess, is Simone Biles. She is the only survivor on the floor competing. And she right. recognizes her role and her responsibility. And that it's not just about gymnastics. It is about today's generation of gymnasts and tomorrow's generation of gymnasts. And she was interviewed, interviewed saying just that. And I think she recognizes that role. And so even at Olympic trials, when she made a few mistakes and she was crying, I remember feeling for her because I'm like, she's not just crying about the mistake that she made that no one's going to remember because it's, you know, she's, make, she's making this Olympic team. But really, I'm sure she feels the enormous amount of weight and the enormous amount of pressure. Um, and I love the fact that she's been such a phenomenal leader. And I hope she knows that we're behind her every step of the way. Wonderful. And I know that we had, because of COVID, you know, there's been like a year and a half that they wasn't able to compete and the gyms were closed. During that time period, we show that they have to set up and retrain again. Um, I was wondering, as an athlete that is, you know, elite athlete like that, what during the, the filming process or as you're watching it yourself, what advice or situation or advice would you have loved to have given them to kind of tell them it's okay, but to still, you know, keep up that mindset? Well, Dana, I will say this, the gymnastics gyms were not closed for a year and a half. And even when uh, COVID was shutting down a lot of facilities, I was hearing that, you know, elite athletes were still out there training because they're not allowed to turn it off. Um, so they were still there training. I think for a short period of time, some of those girls had to back away from the intensity that they were training. It wasn't maybe the 30 plus 36 hours a week, but they were there in the gym and they were not missing a beat. Um, it definitely, you know, put a wrench in things and affected things greatly because you have that concern about, about your health or your family and friends' health. Um, but these, these girls have been very committed and their coaches have been as well. I think for one of our athletes, Connor McLean, um, this was huge. It was a life burning moment for her because when the Olympics were postponed a year, she was not age eligible mm -hmm. for the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. And then when it was postponed a year, she was then age eligible. And that really put a little flame under her and her coach to possibly prepare for these Olympic Games. So that was, I think, the biggest change. Um, also, I know Michaela Skinner probably was like, yes, I get an extra year to prepare. Morgan Hurd, you know, I think she was coming back strong. And then you know, this delay really set her back. Um, Suni Lee needed this time to heal from an injury. And also Lori Hernandez with her comeback of trying to make it a second Olympic team, she would have needed that extra year as well. I can speak from personal experience that in preparation for the 2000 Olympic Games, if I had another year to train, that probably would have helped me greatly. Um, and so that delay, um, you know, I think set some of them back, but it also put things in perspective, not just for these athletes, but for all of us around the world. You know, what's the mo what's most important? It definitely is 
time with loved ones, uh, learning to slow down, take a breather and recognize what's important. Right. Could you talk about the importance of following this class as compared to doing the documentary, say, in kind of normal-ish? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's pretty unique to follow this class because of how much it was. It has changed. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't start shooting um, any footage until it was this year during the training camp and then the competitions um, and such. And, you know, I think that's unique is that it's during the middle of a global pandemic um, and hearing about the young girls and the adjustments that they had to make with their families. I think even Michaela Skinner um, got COVID. So she was out of training for clearly the two week period. And the comeback for that was very challenging for her, uh, but she came back pretty strong. So I think it's definitely unique that, um, you know, this was shot during a global pandemic because of all the changes. And also I would be remiss in, you know, in mentioning um, the uncertainty of the Olympics. How do you train for an Olympics that may or may not go on? I can't imagine like when I was training for my 92, 96 and 2000 Olympics, there was never a thought in my mind that the Olympics weren't going to happen and I wouldn't at least get a shot at getting there. And for these athletes, that's hard. It's hard enough training when you know there's an Olympic Games, but it's hard, very hard making that level of sacrifice and commitment and going through that physical and the emotional toll. Like you, you'll you see this in the docu-series. They breathe, live, sleep, sleep, gymnastics on the way to the Olympics that may or may not happen. You know, there is right. no other, there's no other life for these girls. I'm not saying that they have no life, but you know, maybe there was Lori Hernandez doing a few, maybe she does a personal appearance here or there, but the majority of the young girls, it's all about training for the Olympics. And that takes a toll. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot on your mind. And uh, you'll see that in the series. Right. Thank you so much for speaking with me. Oh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you.